Okay, well, I thought we were going to do a natural uh, oh. cold open, but uh, <laughs> apparently the question of how's everybody doing did not get the um, the uh, kind of... Oh, God, I can't even get my fucking words. <laughs> the conversation full, juice is going. Full and hearty answers that I was hoping for. That's, that's mm -hmm. not... I mean, I can tell you right now, um, I can say that I'm now published. Lovely. Yeah. Um, my, uh, so recently I just did my, I, I walked uh, across the stage for my master's graduation. Mm -hmm. And of my uh, graduating group and my program, um, mine was one of the few, uh, my thesis was one of the few that was picked to be published. Fantastic. And I only learned of it um, by people coming up to congratulate me. <laughs> oh, well, all right then. Because I missed the, the, the pre, like, oh, some people from our cohort were going and doing a little pre-meeting, but I went out to sushi with my parents instead. Mm. Mm. I mean, you made the right choice. Sushi is always the right choice. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Published scholar. Well, so that's a super uh, awesome deal. Super excited about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did you write, by the way? Uh, it was about uh, social emotional impact of play in the early childhood classroom. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, important topic. Very important topic. Um, you know, more talking about how you know. Uh, increasing standards and uh, pressure to focus on mathematics and writing is kind of killing That's play funny. for uh, kids that need that opportunity to actually socialize with other kids. Oh, yeah. So, you know, and also in the context of like uh, COVID-19 and, and how that gave everybody uh, complete isolation for a bit and how it's messed oh, up yeah. kids because it has messed up kids oh yes um so yeah that's what i wrote about it's like 50 pages of research and i was like i, I remember when i was writing that paper i was like there's no way i'm passing this class mm. <laughs> 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 this is garbage I could do so much better. Why aren't I doing better? And then I not only passed it, it was chosen as one of the best ones. So, huh. Imposter syndrome is a bitch. Yeah. I am a massive hypocrite for saying this, but you shouldn't worry so much and you should put more stock in your own abilities. <laughs> well, now I have the evidence to put some stock into. <laughs> uh, but it feels really good. And I had like, I had that, and then the very next day I had a, like the last of my my really big teacher tests. I have another thing I have to do so I can get to full time teaching, but um, that was the last big test in which I had to do um, a whole case study and uh, identify one strength and two weaknesses this kid this kid has when it comes to reading and writing and all that sort of stuff and breaking down stuff and analyzing is it an influ is it a fluency problem vocabulary word analysis um you know that sort of stuff and like what oh, methods okay. you would use to address it so that was a whole kid and caboodle and i also dressed up as santa this week well that's um. me Yes, yeah, so uh, my mom's school had um, an entire event in which the, after school the kids would, uh, various kindergartens would come and they'd like watch the Polar Express together and they had like snacks and stuff and drinks. And I got to go in there and put on a Santa costume. And uh, immediately the issue was the zippers on the on the kind of fake boots to make it look like my shoes or actual boots was broken so we had to tape it up and kind of make it look a little bit a little bit trashy <laughs> Santa 
<laughs> if you just uh, get red and white tape, it's fine. <laughs> look, Santa has he he goes a lot of places. Sometimes the shoes wear out. It's just a thing that happens. You know, everyone like it's the hiking. And then I, I go in at the end of the Polar Express movie. I enter the classroom, and I'm like, ho, 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 ho. And all the kids are like, Santa! I love you, Santa! And I got swarmed by kids. And it was just a really positive, nice, wholesome experience. Handing out, like, silver bells and candy canes to them, and then took pictures with them. That then took that same costume over to my uh, sister's place to take uh, my nephew's first uh, Santa pictures. Mm-hmm. So oh, that's that, pretty great. That was super cool. And I mean, that's. I feel like it's basically um, everything that I got a chance to do, other than, you know, watch the Game Awards. Which I did. Yeah, that was, was a thing that thing. happened. Yeah. You want to talk about it? Uh, we may as well. I we mean, can do. There's, there's not especially much to talk about. I feel like. Yeah. I have nothing to add, as I didn't, I didn't watch it myself. Uh, spoiler warning: Baldur's Gate won everything because, of course, it did. Well, yeah, yeah. fair. Can't say I'm surprised. And Hi-Fi Rush was robbed. Mm. Deserved best action. Just saying. <laughs> Did that come out At this least? year? I came out in January. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sucks. At least uh, it got an award. At least you know. Yeah. It didn't. It didn't get zero awards. There's... That's true. <laughs> I it, saw the video of it like. It wasn't Todd... fucking Spider Man. <laughs> Oh, Spider Man got robbed. Yeah. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. It absolutely no. didn't deserve it. The thing is, it got nominated for like six awards, and it won none of them. It won absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, um. Yeah. So everyone is clowning on Starfield, and it's like, oh yeah, that that game is. You know, whatever. Nobody cares. It's only up for one award, and it didn't win. And then Spider Man's like, "I, I'm up for all of these awards. People know I exist. And that's about as far as that goes." <laughs> yeah, I, I, I liked um, Spider Man too. It's a shame, but this was also a really. I felt like this was a really good year for games. It was. But, you know, it... it I feel like the Spider-Man getting all the nominations and winning nothing is basically saying, you are an okay game. Whereas Starfield getting one nomination and not winning is like, you are kind of a niche thing that not everyone is about anymore. But, you know, you're okay for what you are. That... It, it's a weird thing where it's sort of like, hey... Bronze medal is great, but silver medal means you're a loser. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. Close, close, but no cigar. Um. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, did Resident Evil Four remake not get anything as well? I don't. Th- mm. I feel like it got something, but I can't remember what. It was because it was nominated for um, Game of the Year. It didn't get. It was nominated um, for anything. Uh, that was nominated for Action Adventure, but I think Zelda won that one. So yeah, yeah. I guess it didn't win anything. Zelda won Action Adventure, and Armored Core Six got action and yeah. like robbed. High fly rush. Assholes. <laughs> Armored Core Six is really really good. I don't care. Do you know how many fucking game trailers there were in the Game Awards about Mecha? Because, and I blame Armored Core directly for that. I'm happy about those Mecha. Thank you very much for them. We the are going to be fucking drowning in them and it's going to get so old so fast. Okay, specifically the Mecha ones I'm fine with. Not the overabundance of just same sci-fi aesthetic over and over and over again. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, we've had kind of a mecha drought for quite a while now, honestly. Uh, it ish, sort of, not 
especially like it was still there if you wanted it in you know the places where it always was like mm. and uh, i mean there was anthem as well yeah. that's a thing that's that's gotta suck for bioware because they would have been on the forefront of this huge movement towards mecca for no reason just because FromSoft were doing it again and that's everyone do what FromSoft does that's money yeah. Yeah. That is, I mean, that is the way to success is follow the, the whoever, whatever company is making the most sales. This is kind of uh, weird for me because this is one of the only uh, years in which I don't really have an issue with any of the winners. I'm like, I can see that, or I can understand why that would get that, for the most part. I'm like, it's fine. It's Game Awards. I'm not overly invested. I, I, I saw, I had some friends who were upset that Baldur's Gate kept winning and everything. I'm like, you haven't played Baldur's Gate. You, you haven't played it. It, it. it. They really did put in a lot of effort into that game. Years of early access to put in so much depth of detail. Um, I mean, the recent patch just added a whole epilogue um, yeah. that takes place after the game that accounts for every possible choice and permutation of every that character you could have talked to throughout the course of the game. Wow. This is the right way to do a lot of patches and a lot of DLC. Just having it be that kind of openness to allow for that many op options and opportunities along the way. I mean, I know we've discussed this at length already. I still haven't played the game myself, but I really need to at some point. It's like the it was Baldur's Gate 3 was up for best ongoing game, which I find hilarious. Because it's it's not it shouldn't really qualify, but it it, it kind of has constantly been growing with constant patches and hot fixes. I mean, it's not, yeah. it doesn't qualify, but I find it funny that, that they put it in there anyways. Yeah, and then Cyberpunk won that award, and that's some people have issues with oh, that. I that was don't... Cyberpunk that was in there. I was wrong. I, I, got, I got mixed up. Yeah, Cyberpunk was in there. Yeah, it won that one. It mm -hmm. won ongoing game. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, fair enough. Like, people have problems with that because, like, hey, they only release an expansion. That doesn't mean it's ongoing. Well, yeah, but they've been releasing pa big patches every, like, six months or so. Like, 1.1 through 1.6, I think it got to before they did the big 2.0 update. And then yeah. they did the 2.1 update, like, a day or so before the game awards dropped. So yeah, uh, yeah, that that's an ongoing game. They have been adding content to it since release, and yeah. I just I know a lot of uh, FF14 fans who are upset that FF14 didn't win. Yeah, well, but you know, what you gonna do? And then there was. No Man's Sky wasn't on the list of nominees, and I kind of appreciate that because, my God, am I sick of hearing about No Man's Sky, and nothing encapsulated that feeling of being sick about hearing No Man's Sky than the trailer they put out for No Man's Sky that listed every single fucking patch that they dropped for No Man's Sky. <laughs> and it was, like, 20 fucking names. I don't even know what, like, 18 of them even were. Ugh. I, yeah. I, I get it, I respect it I respect fixing the game it's enough, stop and no sooner had I said that than, hey, we're actually doing a new game cool, I'm, I'm glad let's, let's move on please something so, that... so I was going to branch off on another uh topic uh, um i was gonna talk about hello games new thing okay yeah sorry uh which was uh 
they did the procedurally generated universe and now they're doing a procedurally generated I want to say world they keep saying earth but they should be saying world um, so just a fantasy world that is one single world but that not like a an open world like hey it's a couple of city blocks and you can run around in it or even a whole city or a county or state or it's not just a world but it's a single biome that is the entirety of the planet a world as in like the biodiversity and climate diversity of earth with mountains and oceans and all of that shit included and to hear mr murray the guy who over promises uh the new molino um <laughs> real mountains not video game mountains that are like 200 feet high like actual miles high mountains which is ambitious but that's kind of what they do i guess yeah i don't know if the world itself is procedur procedurally generated because they talked about it as if it was like handcrafted but i don't know they tend to do the procedural generation stuff so I would um, assume it's a mix of both. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the the fan response to that has been, please don't overpromise. Not again. Mm, yeah. We can't do it again. Yeah. Just yeah. shut up. <laughs> Just shut up and release the game. Um, <laughs> which... I mean, they've been working on... Uh, the game's called Light No Fire. Um, yeah. They've been working on it for the last five years. Um, and... I mean, that's a pretty good amount of time. They have a... They have a they, they, he did specifically say, we have a small team. Um, so don't expect it anytime soon, I would say. But... Uh, <laughs> I think... I think it'll be fine. Yeah. They, 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 the success of No Man's Sky um, has definitely got their studio enough of a push to take on the next thing. I don't know. Because that game was published by Sony, which means Sony takes like, what, mm. 80% of the revenue? That is true. So I genuinely don't know. I, I guarantee they're not going to go through fucking Sony for this one. Because, yeah. wow, Sony threw them under the bus. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. You honestly would think that that's going to backfire on them. I mean, if anything, they used Sony as one of the mainstream gaming producing companies. That would, that would boost their name their popularity for the first game if they're going to be making another one and going somewhere else it feels like they would just be building off of the foundation that sony already helped them build and so sony only gets to cash in on them once as opposed to well that's that's the thing it was sony provided them all of the marketing all of the, hey, we're going to put you on, who was it? It wasn't fucking, uh, it, was, it was a talk show thing where it was like, hey, can you find other people in, in, in this game? Can you do like multiplayer? And he's like, it's spectacularly unlikely, but yes, you can. And no, you couldn't. Um, but Sony gave them all those opportunities to advertise the game in massive ways. And then... As soon as the game came out and all those, uh, let's call them optimistic promises, uh, weren't entirely accurate, Sony were like, we don't, these, these guys are assholes, wow, that's really shitty of them, you should, yeah, 
That's bad. They shouldn't have done that. What terrible designers. The weird... We're just as betrayed as you are, kind of thing. Okay, that's... <laughs> and at that point, it's like, yeah, they they were cutting their losses. It was like, we expect this entire studio to just shut down from just how bad this is. Um, oh, dear. So the incredible success story of like them actually managing to pull that back from holy shit this is the worst launch in history to wow people actually really like this game and very much appreciate them actually sticking to it and fixing it uh and sony didn't predict that would happen understandably because that didn't happen historically that was a bad game that launches as a bad game is just a bad game forever. That is the prevailing wisdom. That is a Miyamoto quote, I believe. Yes. Uh, and that has stopped being the case in basically at the start of that era of just like, hey, we we can patch it, we can fix it in as time goes on, and that's fine. Uh, and if we advertise it appropriately as, hey, the game is good now and it's what you wanted and what you expected, then people will probably give it another shot. Mm -hmm. People like redemption stories. That's just how it is. Yeah. I I wanted to mention, I found the Steam page for it, um, for Light No Fire. It does mention uh, procedural, procedural Earth, but um, you construct persistent buildings. Yeah. So it seems like, you know, the idea is that people will just keep building and building and the structures they build will last. This is kind of different yeah. compared to other things where um, servers get wiped and then buildings get. Yeah, they've, away. they've said it's a shared and persistent world where just like one effectively, let's call it one server where, you know, that's you're just building things on top of the world and that's just how the world is now all of it for everyone mm -hmm. which is a cool concept kind of I, I just wonder how it's going to work in practice yeah but uh yeah it's very hard to say a lot of things like that don't work because it's just like Things the players build need deterioration rates. Otherwise, they're, the world just clogs. Well, that's also a thing they have said. It's a world as in to scale of the world. Uh, mm -hmm. So an actual planet size. And I believe Murray said it was a bigger Earth. So larger than our actual pl planet. Yeah. The, the mentality was instead of making... Um, all these worlds, we're going to take that size and apply it to making a two scale or even bigger than normal scale uh, planet. Which, I mean, if their universe is big enough for everybody, then sure, let's try doing a singular world. Experimental. Yeah. Could be fun. There's no reason it couldn't work. It's it's basically the same problem as um, No Man's Sky when that was coming out when they were talking about multiplayer. It's like, yeah, it is kind of spectacularly unlikely for you to meet other people just randomly. It's not going to be quite as severe odds as for No Man's Sky, but still a similar kind of thing. There's, there's going to be space. Yeah. Hmm. Um... I, to, to to move on. Um, yeah, I don't I, think there's do... anything else for the Game Awards. <laughs> I mean, there was uh, a trailer just a, for yeah, just the horrible mishandling of like how long people were allowed to talk for. Oh, that was awful. They mm, they very much it's overcorrected really... for Chris Judge. On the other hand, Mister Keeley, please stop doing the Muppet skits. I love the Muppets too, but come on, dude. You're you're the only one that likes them. That he he has time for Muppet skits, but not for speeches, heartfelt speeches from 
developers. Yeah. Um, never mind the fact that most of the awards are just kind of announced off to the side and people don't get to go up and actually receive them. Mm. <sighs> that still bothers me that like, oh yeah, we're going to announce this award and this award and this award and this award and then like nobody gets to come up and say anything unless they're like Doug Bowser who is That's the only like, yeah, that side really person sad. yeah in, in fairness awards like best esports team and best esports event like fuck uh. yeah those ones are like I'm not too worried about I, I feel like the esports ones are kind of strange but it's weird to even have them yeah like the, exactly. the entire point like esports is already a competition what are you doing but it's it's just um a lot of other just the non like even just all the genre stuff the game genre stuff is just off to the side uh, um some of it, the the lesser genre quote unquote lesser genres are yes sports and racing for example wasn't action and action adventure off to the side because uh, i'm pretty sure that was off to the side it pretty sure was Community's... yes actually you're right because action was armored call which would have had yeah. the FromSoft guys up and action adventure was tears of the kingdom and the only time that uh i don't know his name went up oh. was for best uh, best something um doug bowser went up for when mario wonder won best family uh game but yeah that that's was... in the pre-show yeah yeah but um the majority of the of of the of the uh awards felt like they were off shunk to the sides the ones where they do get a speech uh you got <laughs> the music playing almost instantly to mm. get you off the stage Yeah. Um, but I did, at the very least, um, get to see that there's the the trailer for the new um, Dragon Ball game, which is a Budokai Tenkaichi style. I'm super happy and excited about that. Yeah, that okay. is that the one that was originally announced as Budokai Four, and uh, now has a new name. Yeah, it's Dragon Ball Sparking Zero now. Um, looks beautiful. Um, <laughs> I feel like they're setting themselves up for a soda. Sparkling <laughs> zero. Sparkling zero. <laughs> I I'm, I can't wait to play as Goku mid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have all the <laughs> little, like, Goku mid at the middle point of his journey with his mm. own... <laughs> Um, eh, he's all right yeah he's all right <laughs> uh so that's that's fun that's really nice uh and they showed the god of war ragnarok valhalla dlc which is out in just a couple days oh yeah that looked that looked like god of war i'm not gonna say it looked good like it was just god of war combat like it's a free roguelike mode yeah sure why not that's cool I like that game. Hmm. Um, and uh, a new mana game, Visions of Mana. Or Visions of Mana, however you want to say it. Um, coming out in 2024. Uh, so that's from the Secret of Mana series. Um, and they've been, they've remade like every game in that, um, in that series of RPG games. And this is the first time in a very long time that it's getting an actual new game and it looks beautiful so that's that was exciting and kojima also has um appeared through a door to talk about ode od or odd or odd in which you have it's a fake fan fan fiction game <laughs> You, you, you just have people 
repeating things at the camera and then they scream in terror and it's probably a PT-esque horror thing. That's another thing we can cut. Mr. Keeley, we don't need Kojima to be on stage every year. Yeah, there wasn't really much to show other than that Jordan Peele was there too. I mean, it's different when he actually has something to announce, but yeah, if he's, if he's just the go-to celebrity guest to have on stage, it's probably not needed. Well, Jordan Peele is working with Kojima in, on this uh, game. Mm. Um, but I I was getting very sick throughout watching this of CG trailer after CG trailer. There were a lot of after C After CG trailer. After C and I'm like, Kojima is going to show this thing, and it's going to come out in four years. Hmm. Like, that's that's how it goes. We'll get next year. We'll get another CG trailer. Then after that, we'll get another CG trailer, and then after that, we might get a snippet of gameplay. Yeah, I I, I did notice the um, there was back to back trailers of, I think it was the last sentinel and the first something or other and it was just hey that's a cool cg trailer in a nice cyberpunk looking world and there's robots and the good fight choreography and that's cool um what's this game and then the next one was like hey there's it's fucking mecha and shit i guess we're doing that because that's the theme of the show and it's Okay, there's stuff like robots and fighting and shit, I guess. And what's this game? Like, it it's it's just trailers that tell us literally nothing. I can't even peg a genre for some of these games. Like, what are you doing? That's the worst. When you you can't even tell a genre, it's something that broad. Um. At the very least, uh, I was really happy to see that, um, I mean, it was earlier on in the presentation, but, uh, or show, whatever. The Dead Cells devs uh, really, uh, showed off their new game, Windblown, which appears to be like a multiplayer roguelike. Oh, okay. It looks super, super clean and super cool. Um, so I, I like that idea of a multiplayer roguelike style uh you know, combat thing. Hmm. That's cool. Just there was Dave the Diver is doing a crossover with Dredge. Mm-hmm. The two fishy games. Yeah. I'll yeah. Play, I'll, play that. I'll play that. Dave the Diver is a very good game. Um, Ikumi Nakamura came out to talk about a CG trailer for a game that doesn't have a publisher. Yeah. I I really like her, as as does Fresh, who randomly decided to ask in the chat, "Hey, what was with that really excitable girl who was on stage on something a while back?" And I'm like, "Oh, I know who he means." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was weird, but yes. Um, I mean, I mean, she's she's been independent for a while now with her own studio and is trying to get stuff off the ground like she was on ghostwire i think and, yeah uh, that went badly uh to my understanding mm. so now she's just trying to shop around projects which is fair enough you know that's hustle of being independent that's how it works mm -hmm. got a studio together at least called yeah. unseen like i believe that, that... That is a good thing of the Game Awards, is like, hey, you, you get these talented people and they make an impression and then they're allowed to continue making an impression. That's that's yes. a really good thing. Uh, I really liked... Um, when, I think one of the things that stood out for me the most was this, this action game called Berserker, or the first Berserker Kazan, or I don't know how to pronounce it. That looks super cool. It's Viking Souls. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I like oh, that. Okay. 
I, I, I like the aesthetic and the art and the action looks fun. Yeah. That made me happy. I also noted one that was a side scroll action game uh, with African myth theming. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Zao. Cool. What was it called? Uh, Zao, Z A U, or Tales of Kinzera Zao. Yeah, I thought I thought there was a K in it. That was that's that was the Kinzera as well. I was thinking of, yeah, that that looked really cool. It looked very, um, very much of the action platformer rather than just a platformer of just the fast paced combat of just like you know how it goes, like that sort of thing. It looked very cool. I was very into it. Yeah, I I really like that. Um... And what is it? Um, the, the Ori devs had announced something as they well. They did. <laughs> I'm, I'm going through the list of things. <laughs> oh, well. Um, yeah, no, this is the... I'll, uh, no rest for the wicked was the name of the game. Right, um, right. I just that I just good. typed Ori Dev new game in. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, that. Yep. Uh, and and then the Dead by Daylight devs were making their uh a single player game. Uh, called the Casting of Frank Stone. Oh, that's who. Okay, that's who made that. Yeah. Um, and you had uh like. Like uh, a a sur- a single player survival Jurassic Park game that looked kind of fun. I mean, it looked kind of all of the hits from the Jurassic Park movies is what it looked kind of like. I mean, yeah, but playing that that could be fun. Not really, but okay. Uh, I feel like previews for Jurassic Park things have to be that though. Yeah, it has to be recognizable. Mm. Um. And uh, also, uh, the uh, you know the team behind you know Death Loop and other things, Arcane Lion, uh, are making a Blade game, a Marvel Blade specifically. Uh, I think you mean Arcane Leon. Arcane Leon, I yeah, same yeah. thing. Okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Blade game. I remember the old Blade games for the PS2. That that was actually really good. Yeah. It was, um... They had an odd control scheme. I think the entire thing was played on just the sticks. No buttons. Something well, like that, anyway. It was I very feel unique like getting... and very fun, actually. I feel like getting the Dishonored devs to do that is a good idea. I don't know. It, it just feels right. Yeah. I could see that. And, you know, that's what they did. Uh, I mean, uh, also, the uh, the only the only thing that would have made Todd Howard smile, which was the Fallout TV show showing footage um, with a huge guy coming out in power armor for that. Hmm. So it was it was new content for that at least. Yeah, I didn't know that there was going to be a follow show, but it was the world premiere trailer for their Amazon series that's going to be happening. Yeah, it it was a slightly different trailer. It was some of the same stuff that was. Ah, uh, okay, action. okay. Uh, I had I was in call as I heard one of my friends scream no when they saw the new Guilty Gear character. <laughs> okay because it's uh, El felt valentine and they didn't want that character they really didn't want that character and so they salted super hard and that was fun hmm. uh the ff16 got dlc available it's like t- available today it's like today yep. what there are there are two dlcs for final fantasy 16 the next one comes out in april i want to i want to say uh, it comes out later, yeah. 
I'm not showing the. What is it? I was just looking at it and it showed the next thing, but whatever. But yeah, uh, it comes out. Uh, you have the first one, and then it's spring of 2024. And it's Echoes of the Fallen and the Rising Tide. And the Rising Tide is all about Leviathan, and you get the Leviathan powers. And probably a Leviathan boss fight. And both of these DLCs take place before the end of the game. Yeah. I have not played the game, and I definitely haven't finished it, but from what I understand, there's not going to be any DLC coming after the end of the game. Nope. Uh, there is... People were hoping for some, but there is going to be none. Um... Yeah, yeah uh, I haven't tried the new uh, the new DLC yet, but from what I understand, is it's basically just adding a small quest line and then an optional dungeon for what's available right now. Yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. It's it's like is is it free? It's uh, I think it's like ten bucks. Oh well, whatever. And then, uh, I guess the the last thing worth mentioning, at least in my mind, is the new Monster Hunter was the final thing they dropped. Monster Hunter Wilds. Right, that thing, sure. Coming out in 2025. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> oh, it doesn't feel real that 2025 is a year that's, like, just a year and a month away, technically. Next thing you know, it'll be 2030. Just end me. End <laughs> me. I don't, I don't want to see 2030. End me before then. I mean, be there's very, a whole thing about very, climate very and stuff. Alright, well, don't worry. The world will end before we get to 2030. Yeah. <laughs> well, in fact, I think it's only supposed to get better like 2032, but yeah. can't even rely on the world ending. Mm. Oh, come now, Zero. You don't think that everything's just going to suddenly go from zero to a hundred, do you? I'm I sure thought... there will be plenty of earth-shattering disasters along the way to the apocalypse. That's how it usually goes. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get started. Let's crack one out right now. Come on. <laughs> Soon enough. Did you see the um <laughs> do you see the trailer for the new Atlas game? Uh Metaphor Refantasio. Oh Re-Fantasio. yeah, that looked cool, yeah. That looks Cooper that looks super cool. It's Cooper cool. I like Cooper cool. I like the non persona SMT Atlas stuff that they do. That's cool to me. Uh, Zom sent me the trailer for that. I admit that I haven't watched it yet. I also admit that Persona is presently the only exposure I have to Atlas. I have no doubt that it's good quality. I'm just naturally hesitant to branch out into newer things. I mean, that's fair. That's most people's exposure. So, In Venice, yeah. this one is explicitly made by the Persona team. Yes, not, not just it's... Atlas as a big umbrella company, but specifically the Persona people. Yep, uh, the Persona people. You have Shoji Meguro doing the music. You know, it's the the familiar funky crew here. Um, character designers from Persona Three, Four, and Five. Like you have um, the crew over here, but doing something entirely new with a new world it's an rpg still but like i'm i'm excited about that that looks fun Mm -hmm. i'll have to look at it myself i just saw a part of the trailer where it's like in the top right corner says uh days until the day of calamity 10 Mm. i'm like oh okay so there might be some sort of like daily life preparing uh doing stuff to kind of get ready for the big big battle Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it might be kind of a slice of life kind of thing obviously they know how to do that 
yeah they, there's a whole um there's dates and stuff associated so as well as like they tell you the time and things so <laughs> i'm guessing that they're doing um for sort of but instead of school it is um the apocalypse know, the apocalypse so it's like persona 3 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Persona 4 and Persona 5. Uh, 4 was kind of an afterthought, really. Nah, fair. Oh. I'm really interested to see more of the uh, of that game in particular. Mm. But, yeah. Um, anyway, that's enough of the Game Awards. You know, yeah. Just, just, mm-hmm. I like video games. Yeah, they're cool. We all do. How's everybody doing? I am very tired. I finally got a commission chapter done. I am now only four full chapters away from being on brick. You got it. Crank it out. Uh, Please stop saying crank it out. (laughs) <laughs> that's twice in like two minutes I that no <laughs> I'm sorry that's not a term in your uh, vocabulary would you prefer it's... crank that hog <laughs> <laughs> I think he'd prefer not being <laughs> pressed to continue grinding as he has been doing to this point Perhaps. I don't know what we're doing. Okay, so yeah, that four chapters is all I've got left, and then I'm on break. I say four, it's kind of five, but that's only the fifth one is a feeling of obligation that I really need to get something finished because it's been waiting for too long. But I'm not getting paid for it, so it's like. Eh. <laughs> uh, it, it is one of those situations where the stress is just kind of getting to me all over on everything so i don't know maybe i'll feel more up to that last one when i am not obligated and i can just take a break and then it won't feel like an obligation anymore that'd be cool ah. yeah stress is stress yes uh... Yeah, that's pretty... Mm. There was a thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, One of the commissions I've been doing has required me to do some mild media homework of understanding exactly what I'm writing. Uh, So, Teen Titans was actually a really good show, did you know? (laughs) Yes. Yes. It, It is a really good show. It came out in 2003. That was long after I stopped watching cartoons. So I never watched it. Uh, uh, yeah, no. The DC animated stuff uh, around that time was generally very good. Yeah. That 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 show holds up. If if you accept that it's, you know, it's a kid show, it, it still holds up. Mm-hmm. And then they made the the edgy live action Teen Titans, mm. where where Robin looks at the camera and says, "Fuck Batman." Yeah, everyone loved that. <laughs> uh, and they decided to use and I'm assuming it was just one episode, and they decided to make uh, Starfire black. Which okay, fair enough, it's fine. But then also decided to use an episode where they're just dressing like they they, they dressed a kind of like a prostitute. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Which is I think accurate for the comic character. I think she dressed a lot skimpier in the comics. Well that's that's the thing. It it wasn't supposed to be her costume, it was just an episode where they were going undercover or something, I think. Something like that. Uh <laughs> And uh, right, so were... that was what they decided to use for the advertising. And I was like, mm, okay, that's what you want to do. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that the cartoon holds up. Um, aside from certain, 
they mm, it it kind of felt like they nailed down what Raven was about for a single episode and then they forgot it for every other episode. <laughs> yeah. It's uh how much did you watch? I have watched the first season. Okay. And from, from cultural osmosis I know the general gist, but the thing is like for that one episode, I think it's the one where Raven and Starfire switch bodies. They make it explicitly clear that Raven has to keep a tight leash on her emotions so mm-hmm. th- her magic doesn't go crazy. Um, but then in every other episode, they have her be really expressive and nothing happens. Yeah. It's just It's just okay now. It's yeah. fine. They do a lot of focus on her um, later on, and like she gets a huge, huge arc. Everybody loves Raven. It was a different show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and ironically, I didn't love it. So you know. Um, but no, it's uh, no, that's that's not right. Isn't it supposed to be everybody loves Chris, and that's so Raven? Oh yeah, you right. And yeah. everyone loves Raymond. Also, Raymond. Yeah, right. everybody uh, hates Chris. Is how it was. Yeah. So. Man, no, sitcoms. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> it's it's really it's still bizarre to me that you had Teen Titans and it was like everybody loved it, it was well received, and then show gets canceled. We end on a cliffhanger, and they then decide to make Teen Titans Go, which is for babies, and then Teen Titans the live action thing, which is way too adult. They had the Goldilocks. <laughs> they had Goldilocks already, and they decided to break it in two. Yeah, basically. There was also, I don't know whether anyone watched it, because evidently people didn't want to pay attention when Go happened. Uh, there was a thing where it was a crossover between original Teen Titans and then the Go version. Yeah, it was... I have I, only... I, I'm aware of that. I have only seen one clip from that crossover, and it was it was original Robin talking to Go Robin and saying, "When I first met you, I thought that you were this." this I can't remember what he said, but he basically says that he thought that Go Robin was what he was, overly silly and not anyone to take seriously just something like that and as this is as they're shaking hands and go robbins prompts him with and and original <laughs> robin finishes with and you are <laughs> yeah no this yeah. you're at least silly loser but then the just sentence just stops there the whole i think the whole crossover was just meant to be some kind of response to people who were complaining about it, but no, that doesn't make the complaints wrong. I mean, wrong is very subjective. It's more of a case of, yeah, you have complaints. This isn't what you wanted. Doesn't mean this has no right to exist. That's not how that works, which honestly, I kind of respect that. Like, yeah, okay. You you wanted more regular Teen Titans. That's fine. You're not getting it though, and complaining isn't going to make you get it. And getting mad at us really isn't going to make you get it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I do wish there was a more civilized setting for just like, "Hey, we don't like this," that people can express aside from yelling at developers on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But it's Teen Titans Go was a show that spawned from just little shorts that were just goofy little shorts based off the original Teen Titans. And like they brought back a lot of the same voice cast and everything, but people were like, but you you ended Teen Titans on a on a cliffhanger. 
of what was going to happen next and that never we never got any closure for that yeah it was a real slap in the face to be go from cliffhanger to fucking go yeah so a lot of people were uh, not satisfied but um, you said you were um, researching uh, Teen Titans for a for a fic? Yeah, for a commission. Mm-hmm. So, I, I just needed to get character voice for Raven down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Have uh, you got... Sorry? Did... Never mind. I was going to ask if you got to one episode, but I don't think the one I'm thinking of was in season one. No idea. Um, <laughs> I mean, you didn't tell me, so I guess no idea. Um, I I don't think I did anything else cool. Um, I'm I'm gonna just quickly pull up Steam just to check. <laughs> just give me a second. Uh, oh, I played a bit more of the Disney thing. The Animal Crossing Disney thing. It remains kind of neat. I hadn't played it in a while, so. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. But that's pretty much all I have to say about that. So, yeah, that's everything. Uh, Slicer, how you been? I'm pretty good. Um, I did a, a Christmas movie marathon last night, which was pretty fun. <laughs> did you watch mm-hmm. Nightmare Before Christmas? No, we did watch um, uh, the 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 one zero mentioned earlier. Fuck, Pan uh, Polar Express. That's it. Yeah, Panda Express. <laughs> yeah, let's go get a, let's go to Pan Express. Get some great Christmas food. Chinese American food. Uh, how about Muppet Christmas Carol? I wish that would have been on brand for the kind of things we were saying. Disappoint me, man. Did you see Elf? Yes, that was the first oh. time. <laughs> Will Ferrell strikes again. Over yep. Muppet Christmas Carol, really? Yeah, of course. Uh. In fairness, I hadn't seen Elf in a long time, and so I voiced that I wanted to see it, and uh, th- a couple friends are like, yeah, it's been a while, so we saw that. Shame. But... Uh, one actually genuinely good movie we saw was, uh, I think it's called Christmas as Usual. Uh, it's about this Indian guy dating this Nor- Norwegian woman, and uh, they go to her family's place, and it's just like, they they don't treat him very well. <laughs> it's like, he's just expected to know their traditions, and they don't explain anything, and then get mad at him that he doesn't understand. That sounds very frustrating. Yeah. yeah. You, you said this movie was very good. I assume... It's, it's they, they learn their lesson. I mean, they get better, obviously. It is a oh, yeah. movie. But but yeah. Uh, I didn't expect racial tension the movie. <laughs> in the Christmas section. Nothing <laughs> says Nothing says Christmas like racial tension. <laughs> Hmm. That was fun. Quite possibly the most honest Christmas movie I've ever heard of. Uh, <laughs> there's a. Uh, I forget what it was called, but it was essentially Freaky Friday, but with like an entire family. And that was. Um, it was well written for the most part, but there was so much secondhand embarrassment that me and a friend of mine just started busting out models and started making models <laughs> in the corner of the room. <laughs> So, that was great. Oh man, when secondhand embarrassment like hits, I just I I have to leave the room. I can't even be in the same room. It's not great. Yeah, yeah. I I don't understand people who can watch that sort of stuff. Mm. Cringe it's, comedy it's... is not my thing. I can't handle it. Likewise. Like I think the worst for me is uh, the show Impractical Jokers, where they are messing with real people, 
and I'm just like, oh, oh gosh, my most awkward fears of secondhand embarrassment happening. Yes, and yeah, that, just, that I, kind of thing is. I think there's a growing sentiment of like, don't for that sort of thing nowadays. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Just, I, I, I can't, I can't handle it. Let me leave the room and bury my face in a pillow. Yeah. feel the urge to do so just from talking about it. <laughs> but yeah, how Johnny so, uh... Somali's doing in prison. So moving on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, been playing a lot of Hunt Showdown recently. I'm not very good at it, but it is a lot of fun. I don't know if anyone has played that. I don't know what that is. Me. Mm -hmm. uh bio themed or by set in the bayou flintlock guns kind of uh you're hunting a monster but also every other player tries to kill you mm. in the bayou so it's a it's a very um everything you do makes sound so you walking around or even changing the type of ammo your gun uses by like clicking a little switch on the side of it or whatever, like, everything makes sound. So uh, it, it gets real dangerous real fast. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been enjoying it a lot. Now that I have a, a computer, I've just been kind of deep diving a bunch of different games. Or, you know, taking the chance to actually get games that would have made my laptop cry. Yeah. I I still need to upgrade my computer, but that's a that's a distant uh dream. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is a lot. I mean, it's it's not cheap. Especially if you don't have your original build list and you're not sure which ones are like what parts are gonna fit. Yeah, I my my computer's uh broken in a few ways. I need to get a new computer. Mm. Uh and it is like it's just, it's just old at this point. It's old. It happens. At this point the only thing mine misses or is lacking is space. I need to get another hard drive. It's got mm. a terabyte on it, but that fills up real fast when you're downloading a lot of games. Yeah, it does. So yeah, I I think that's about it for my week, honestly. It's been not too exciting. Okay. How you doing, patient? I'm doing alright. The job search keeps going and going and going, unfortunately. I've been given some personal connections, and I've had some promising interviews, and I just keep never making it past that stage. Uh. I'm in no danger of falling below the water, so to speak, but it's it's getting a bit vexing. That just sounds really draining, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's nice to have more time to myself to just relax. I've been running pretty much almost nonstop for the past five years now. So it's good to just be able to take the time for myself. At the same time, I'm I'm running out of funds. Not not quickly, by any means, but this is this income that I'm getting from from unemployment is substantially less than I'm used to, mm -hmm. and it's finite. So I need something to work out at some point. I'm glad it's My helping helping pad things out for as long as possible. Yes, that's. I was praying for time to rest for a long time before this happened. 
So I, honestly, I just need to be milking it for all it's worth, and I don't think that I am for the most part. Mm. So I just I need to do more of that. It's so it's just. It's just a matter of reconciling everything together. Mm. Yeah. One of my friends was out of a job for like, I want to say like a year, right? But uh, now she's managed to get what is essentially her dream job. Um, That's good. She, 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 uh, she's an entomologist who was a lot of exper- experience working um with like the zoo and with animals and then got a really good zoo job after being laid off from the last one. Did you say and... entomologist? Yes. A bug enthusiast? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. And, and so uh, ended up, uh, you know, in her off time, uh, what, what she did a lot of the time was she volunteered and did volunteer work at the zoo. And so built up a, a pretty decently sized um, resume of that stuff and from the other projects and other work was able to get like a job that she really really likes right now so just endure and uh, you'll get there thanks yeah yeah I'm not despairing or anything just the stress is starting to get to me a little that's all mm-hmm. it's understandable it's a stressful situation Mm. especially when my mother's going through the same thing and uh, part of um, part of what she does to help herself with it is uh, sending me potential jobs as well so yeah like my dad got laid off and then like like a long time ago and then he threw that Hail Mary pass at KFC (laughs) <laughs> and look where I am now. <laughs> it, did, it wasn't even uh, fully didn't meet all the qualifications that they were asking for, but they liked him so much they gave him the job. Mm. Yeah, it's all about it's all about making a good impression these days. Mm-hmm. Always shoot your shot. Yeah, and so I do. I just keep falling up short. That's all. Honestly, it's usually yeah. not even anything you're doing as the interview, the interviewee. Just, yeah. They already have the position filled or they're looking for some different kind of person or whatever. It's, it's not something you can change about yourself. Yeah. I'll get to it soon enough. I know. It's not a question of whether things will work out. It's a question of when. Mm -hmm. But that's stress-inducing enough as it is. Understandable. Yeah. So aside from the job search, I've spent the past few weeks platinuming Tactica. Mm, It, It felt a little unfinished, I will concede, but the story stands out as much as it ever has. Top notch for Persona. And unlike the Q games, for once it doesn't end with everyone getting amnesia. So that's nice. Well, the DLC does, but not the main story. Is this canon? It can fit into canon. It happens... After the events of Royal, but before the protagonist returns home. So, before Strikers, and after after defeating the last boss of Royal, while you're still in the uh, mundane post-game area. Okay. Yeah. So fits into canon they don't forget everything um and from what you're saying the story's good yeah the story is exceptional i've only heard one person saying anything bad about it and well she uh 
I I just won't say anything there. Not referring to anyone that uh, I've mentioned before, I don't think, but... Just another person who I think is seeing a certain character in an irrationally bad light. Uh. Just mm. seeing all of the bad and acknowledging none of the good, to put it that way. I suppose that's fair. Mm. Yeah. On an entirely unrelated note, Morgana sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I tried to I, think of a counter argument and I didn't have any. Nope, you're fine. <laughs> so moving on, just because I didn't feel like trying to counter argue that doesn't seem worth it. Uh, it was a I'm, joke. Dude. I yeah. am. <laughs> or I figured. Hard to tell. Anyway, with Tactica Platinum, I'm getting back into Persona 5 Royal because even after all this time, there is one thing that I have kept myself completely blind about for the game, and that is a certain bonus boss battle that is only available on New Game Plus. So I'm currently uh, striving to get to that point. So yeah. that'll be fun. And after that, we'll see what happens. Of the games that have been announced for coming soon, none of them leap out at me among the ones that have already been released. I mean, Super Mario RPG looks great, and I've heard all of the hype about it. I have no doubt that it's an exceptional game. Just I never played the original, so I'm not over the moon about it i am if if there's any games coming up that i'm really really looking forward to that would be princess peach showtime of all things mm -hmm. yeah just i'm not sure what it is about it princess peach taking on a more active role or all of these different settings and taking on a different persona for each of them <laughs> maybe that's part of it. <laughs> it this is the it's the only the second game to have peach playing as like the main character role yeah um i mean she's been playable in other games certainly but to be like her own game it's only the second one and the last one was super princess peach which was all about um her using her emotions as power-ups yeah, she solves problems by crying. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay, so yeah, she's definitely stepping up here. As well-deserved with all the... Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one most. And <laughs> Thousand Year Door is probably going to be shortly behind that. I, did, I never played the original of that one either. That's interesting to me. So, of the Mario RPG games, uh, which ones have the you only, played? The only one I've played is the original Paper Mario for Nintendo 64. That's interesting. Okay. Because um, Thousand Year Door is one of my favorite games of all time. Mm-hmm. Because it just builds so much on what the original Paper Mario does. And, like, <laughs> um, it is it is a, a a darker Mario game that takes a lot of liberties with what they do. Um, I mean, they have a freaking uh, noose, noose, the noose hanging in the, in the center of the town square in Rogueport. There's a whole place where people get hung. <laughs> Like wow. it, hanged. yeah, hanged. I can't talk today. I'm sorry. I cannot speak. I've lost my ability to speak. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm constantly correcting myself. But like, that's a really good game. But like Super Mario RPG. Sorry, it. Mm. 
I, I just corrected you because I wanted to be a smart ass, but then I remember you just talking about people getting hung. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's hanged. I understand the hanged man. I get it. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, uh, um, no, nah, but um, Super Mario RPG is the, the first, you know, RPG Mario game, but that's. It's also one that was developed with, you know, Square. And so it is very much like you get a lot of Final Fantasy um esque in there. Um mm. in terms of how it works. Uh have a party of three. They added a, a triple tax or triple tax in That's the re release and they have full equipment systems and like leveling up and everything that's a lot more in line with traditional RPGs. It's a very fun game, but I've always been more of a Paper Mario guy myself. Mm -hmm. Though, I know a certain someone rather passionate about the direction that Paper Mario has been taking pretty much until they announced this remake. And when I say very passionate, I mean very, very passionate. <laughs> yeah. Um... I, I think I've talked about it before as well. But just yeah, yeah, no, the chuggest yeah, Terry Conroy with his whole stick it uh sticker star. Um you, you you can't know unless you've played Sticker Star, which I have, how bad it got. Well, I mean Chugga's review is pretty all encompassing. He's yeah. played through the entire game at least three times he is i mean this is almost three hours in total and he is remarkably fair with everything he says it's not just this sucks moving on he he has solid reasons for everything and yeah, yeah. it's it's a bit discouraging honestly it's it's why people were so happy to see Thousand Year Door come back. Yep. Because because oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we have an actual RPG again. We we don't. There's a point to actually doing battles again. Enemies drop experience again. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to seeing how. How good it gets. <sighs> but yeah, this is... I mean, Chagas is entertaining as always, and this is him being somewhat more serious than normal as he dissects something that he is intensely passionate about. Mm -hmm. uh, a la video essay. So yeah. But yeah, you know, I... Of the games that have been released lately, none of them are leaping out at me as something that I absolutely need to play now that I've platinumed Tactica. So, how hard was that, by the way? I meant to I went to ask: Were there any like really stubborn achievements, or is it all pretty just like put the time in? The only really stubborn achievements were eh, maxing out your levels and skill trees and completing the compendium and mm -hmm. those first two not all too stubborn if you complete every mission and every side quest then you'll have to do some grinding but not very much the compendium mm -hmm. though i got to about 98 percent before i looked up a guide to fill in the last three slots that i was missing that's fair. But overall, the game as a whole... Uh, I only got stuck once or twice, and it was just a matter of level up a bit more than you can do this. Mm. Yeah. Just need those bigger numbers, basically. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, the game feels slightly incomplete as far as the gameplay goes. But the story carries it all the way through, yeah, in my opinion. 
Hmm. I have no complaints about the first two uh, the first two areas of the game. It's in the latter two where eh, if there are cracks they start showing. It's a it's a definite tonal shift. So that might have been what they were going for in the first place. Hmm. But Futaba does seem to lampshade it at one point, so I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, I would I would absolutely recommend the game. It just feels like if they had another month or two to work on it, it could have been mm. oh. ten stars instead of nine, basically. Mm. Gotcha. The, the top review on Steam for Persona Five Tactica is says Atlas has taken more of my money than the IRS. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that says more about them than it does anything else, but okay. I agree. I just thought that was funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that the um Honestly you you've been you've been selling me on uh Tactica Patient mm. on giving it a, a spin down the road. Because um, uh, I, I do like uh, Persona a lot, and I, I did play um, Strikers, and I didn't touch uh, some the, the later Q games because it was just not canon anyway, so I didn't care as much. But the fact that it, there's not magical memory erasure at the end of this is heartening. Yeah. Like I said, the DLC, the DLC does end with that, but not for everyone. I'll say that much. There's so is... one, there's one key person who remembers. The DLC mm. is set earlier in the canon during the uh, during the casino heist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because that's 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 the stuff dealing with. Um... Um, a catchy, presumably. Yes. It's a much shorter and much darker campaign, but uh, it's enjoyable in its own way. Throw, uh, throws... No, not throws. What's the word here? Uh, it, it introduces a twist on the tactical mechanics of the rest of the game. It's and an oh. extra layer of strategy and difficulty. And aside from, uh, now I don't really have any complaints about it. I'm just bewildered about what they decided to do for the bad guy. You'll see what I mean. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. The. Okay, I'll just I'll just say this much. It's no big surprise that at the end of the main story, who's the final boss? Some kind of god, obviously. It's a persona yeah, game, yeah. what do you expect? Yeah. At the end of the DLC, you fight a disciple of said god who was trying to bring about their plans by a different manner. And this disciple's name is Jerry. Wow. Okay. Not again, Jerry. Not again. Always trying to summon back evil gods, Jerry. You, oh, you want it? It gets worse. <laughs> it's a bright pink cockatoo. Well, all right. You know what? Makes sense. Does it, though? It's persona. Shit's weird. If I, if anything were to try to summon an evil god, heck yeah, that sounds like something that would summon an evil god. Go, Jerry. Make your dreams, <laughs> make your dreams come true. <laughs> well, it's. <laughs> I just, I'm just completely bewildered about the fact that even when it takes on this one-winged angel kind of divine god form. It's still just Jerry. And Jerry. One-winged <laughs> avian. 
I think somebody at Atlas had their lunch stolen in the office by somebody named Jerry and was like, you know what? This is on you now, Jerry. <laughs> That's that would be that would be funny. <laughs> This is the, the the dev studio revenge. I, in any case, yeah, I I fully recommend the main game and the DLC. And I also have a new one through pairing thanks to the DLC with uh, a girlfriend for Yusuke. Hmm. Okay. So I'll leave I'll leave that to your discovery. Anyway, was there anything else of note? Mm. Mm, I made buttercream icing earlier today for a church gathering. Uh, every two weeks we had a little uh, linger longer after the church meetings where everyone gets together and I'm on the committee that makes the food and decides what the food is going to be. So one of the members brought uh, plain sugar cookies and I brought all sorts of icing and decorations and stuff. And so people made their own cookies. And that was and that was very fun and very delicious. Hmm. Hmm. I forgot to say... Uh... For this get together, a housemate of mine made uh, it's a drink mix called Tom and Jerry's. <laughs> it's it's just sugar, butter, and some spices and some eggs. Like it's it's just sweet, and it makes this like paste you add to your drinks, and it's it's shockingly good. But man, it's terrible for you. <laughs> oh, okay. Hmm. So that was a lot of fun. Had some of that. You Americans, I, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it, beans on toast. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. We treat butter as food, not fucking condiments to put in a drink. Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I wouldn't put butter in a drink either. No. I put it in icing, as I did make buttercream icing earlier today, and that was delicious. But drinking it, no. Having it alone, absolutely not. Mm. Also, um, I don't want to try and eat that by itself. It just, it would just be like I have a sweet tooth, but that's disgusting. <laughs> On a completely unrelated note, and bear with me here, you're going to enjoy hearing this. Mm. Hmm. Since it's Sunday, I would like to read a brief bit of this Bible from the General Epistle of Jude. Chapter 1. Ar, me Jude, parent of Jesus Christ and matey of James, be wish in mercy to all them what be sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ, and who be called. May p mercy, peace, and love be bestowed upon you in abundance. Would you believe that someone converted, translated the entire Bible accurately into pirate vernacular? Okay. That's great. <laughs> the pirate's Bible. Hey, you want to go get get the Bible at the store? Nah, I pirated it. In fairness, they probably <laughs> were all, you know, Christian. Well, I, like I said, it's a faithful translation of the King James Version of the Bible. It's just, as you might expect, a meeting with a mixed reception. I personally love it. Yeah. And What's not to love? Great. That's great. I mean, that's that's the whole thing, right? Spread the word, and you know you got to make it legible to all people, so anyone can understand. It. You never know. That's the point. Yes, that's even pirates. Point. <laughs> <laughs> I 
it's definitely going to get me back into the habit of reading the Bible more often. <laughs> sure, whatever works. Yeah. The same orthodox methods cannot work for everyone. That's mm. just the way of the world. Of, of course, every new translation does kind of sometimes end up with awkwardness. Of, I, I would hate for there to be a religious schism caused by a piratical translation of the Bible. Somehow, would you, I... Would you, though? That mm. sounds awesome. <laughs> okay, I need to move on from this possibility before my mind melts. <laughs> was, uh, was there anything else? Nah, just... The Swashbuckle yeah. Baptist Church. That's what the new de de denomination will be. Okay, uh, now that's it for my week. Okay. So um, I believe that's everyone. Uh, Casey, anything Zero. else? Yeah. You, yeah need, you need to do the thing that we may yeah. or may not have done last month. I don't even know. Hey, okay. So <laughs> let's just... Uh... So, thanks to um, our various patrons who have been supporting us on Patreon. Yay! You all are awesome. Thank you to um, James MacArthur for that one dollar donation. Uh, new donor. Uh, thank you to uh, Ryu for that one dollar donation. Thank you to Sailor of House Thunderbird for that um, one dollar donation. Uh, thank you to. Uh, is it showing the. Yeah. Is it $1? Yeah, okay. No, actually, it's. So if I sent it, was $5. It's not showing the power amount unless I click on them now. Hmm. And James so McGrath gave us uh, 220 Australian. <laughs> um, thank you to uh, Vale for that $10 donation. Thank you to Greek Guy for $1 donation. Oh. Thank you to. Uh, Ethan F for your donation, ten dollars, ten bucks. Yep. Thank you to the Crossbrain and uh, to Troper for your ten dollars donations. Y'all are oh, yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Uh, they keep changing the the site on how to actually look at things. They just keep making it worse. Yeah, it it, it just keep it, it was it was simple, it was easy, and and now I have to go through multiple things to get to where I could have just gone with one click before. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, thank you already for supporting us. Mm. Um, I do have one last thing uh, I, I did want to mention because I did uh, start playing a new game, which I'm only a little bit in. Um, it's uh, I don't know if you've heard of this. It's called Cassette Beasts. That sounds fun. Yeah, I've heard of it. <clears throat> Um, where it's basically a Pokemon like, um, and the entire premise is uh, basically you you customize your character, make your own character, and you have been essentially isekai'd to this world with a whole bunch of other people who are also isekai'd, and there are these monsters that are called cassette beasts, which you can um. You don't really catch them, but you record them on your on cassettes. And then you use those recordings to transform into those cassette beasts. Okay. Mm. Um, notably, um, the game has... Uh, you can have one party member with you, a human party member. And they can also transform. So it's all like two on two at the very least. And um, they also have a, a really cool uh, feature I just barely got to use where um, your cassette beast that you are turned into um, and the cassette beast that your partner has turned into can fuse briefly. Oh, okay. And it's an entirely unique um, sprite that you get for it. And that works for every single cassette beast in the game. Oh, how many are there? Um, there's a lot. I, I don't know the exact number, but um, with the DLC, 
Um, there's a hundred and okay, on. with the DLC, there's 141 monsters, which um, ends up with 19,881 fusions. Possible. Jesus. And that's super cool. Yeah. And like they also have things like um, your character as you progress through the game get you get various movement options like. Um, you have a stamina bar for sprinting, which then gets added on to. I got the the glide feature early on, um, which allows me to, you know, glide across gaps and so forth. Um, so it's uh, the the style of game is um, it is two D sprites in a three D setting. Hmm. Um, kind of. Uh, almost what I imagine Pokemon would look like if they just stuck with the 2D style um, and just kind of went into like a 2.5D style you know HD sprite style of game and I've been really enjoying it from what little time I put into it so far hmm. uh, has a pretty good soundtrack too and uh a whole quest system and quest logs and so if you find that you want to play a Pokemon-esque game that's not quite Pokemon um, it, it, it still it has very much has its own identity but if you want, if, if you like creature collecting games of the sort then you'll probably like this game hmm. well that sounds fun yeah. can, you, can you choose to not have a partner can you play solo or does the game kind of force you um, I have not gotten far enough to the point where I think I can. Mm. I think you need, I think you n might need to have one, but I'm not sure. I, I'm not certain on that. But yeah. you get, you unlock various party members as you progress through the game, and then you can switch between them at the very least. I know that much. Oh, okay. Yeah, with the fusing mechanic, I wouldn't be surprised if they force you to have a partner, which, yeah, I mean, that's fine. Yeah. And your partner can use any of the, six cassette beasts you have on you including their own unique one that they have hmm. okay okay so there is a the incentive to get different party members it's not just yeah they have their own unique one that they have and when they use that one um it's stronger um, they're stronger with it so mm. okay there, there's incentive they have their own quest lines i believe and uh you have a a kind of a friendship meter that you build with them um, which I believe can lead to like a, a romance option in the in the end, hmm. or something like it. So, pretty fun. Okay. Yeah, and that's basically it. That's uh, that's the last thing I wanted to address. Hmm. A Patreon link in the description. Discord link in the description. Bye, everybody. See you guys. Bye, bye. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. <laughs>